Hey guys and welcome to The Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and if you're new here, I own and operate a pretty large fish room with a lot of aquariums, almost all of which are tropical fish. Now when you keep tropical fish, that means they need warmer water and there's a few strategies to do this. Now for my application and for many people who operate a lot of aquariums, the best way to do this is to heat the entire space where your aquariums are. Now, of course, this is only practical if you have a lot of aquariums and a dedicated space. But for me, it's the easiest way to ensure that the water in my aquarium stays consistently warm enough for my fish. You see, tropical fish, if they go through really large uh, temperature fluctuations, can have a few problems. They can be more prone to illness as their immunity is compromised. They can not eat as well, they cannot exhibit breeding behavior, and they can, it can actually shorten their lifespan. Now in the wild, of course, fish do go through seasonal shifts and day to night shifts, but it's important to remember but that that is generally in quite a vast body of water. So our applications within an aquarium are totally different. And my fish room does get some seasonal shifts. It definitely gets colder in here in the winter than it is in the summer. But it's done gradually as I utilize space heaters all year round to try and maintain a base level temperature. Now I have a bunch of notes that I've written down here because I reached out to quite a few different companies over the past year trying to figure out if any of them had any truly unique products or concepts and what I found is, is that they basically don't, uh, at least no one that got back to me. But someone who did get back to me was Aquion, and that's because they really wanted to make sure that consumers knew how to use some of their products properly. And that most spe specifically is their line of very small heaters for nano aquariums. And me dealing with a lot of small fish and a lot of my clientele or subscribers dealing with small aquariums, they thought it would be a good fit. Now this isn't sponsored, but I was asked to make this video and Aquion did send me a bunch of little plastic kit tanks and heaters in order to demonstrate for you guys. So, obviously if you only have a singular tank, you're going to need to heat the water. Uh, for the vast majority of tropical fish, but most notably a lot of people keep bettas in small aquariums and those guys definitely like things warm. Now, it's important when you're trying to figure out uh, your heating situation to have a good idea of the temperature of the room that where you're keeping your aquarium. What ambient temperature do you provide? Now, I think the vast majority of us probably utilize some sort of central heating or cooling, so it can generally be pretty easy to figure out the temperature range that you can provide. Heaters are made with different wattages, so size really matters. Heaters are either adjustable or preset, and it's important to understand the difference. Larger heaters for your more standard aquariums are generally adjustable. Preset heaters are generally set to about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, whether they are the preset or the variable temperature, they both convert electricity to heat, so they require good circulation within your aquarium to adequately heat the aquarium. For years I've seen online that people recommend adding multiple heaters for redundancy in case one fails, um, but the reality with these little tiny heaters is that you definitely don't want to do that because you can't set the temperature on the heater itself. You want to use the manufacturer guidelines and choose an appropriate heater for your tank size. Now, that can be a bit confusing how to know because generally there's a recommendation of anywhere from 2 watts to 5 watts per gallon, but this again comes down to the placement of your aquarium, is it close to a door or window, the ambient temperature of your room, do you keep it on the cooler side or the warmer side, and the type of lighting that you use, as lighting can also impact the water temperature. The best way to get a handle on all of this is to set up your aquarium and measure the temperature in the morning and at night for a few days to really get an idea of the range of temperatures that you're providing so that you know how much heat you need to supplement in your aquarium. Nano heaters use a PTC or positive temperature coefficient resistive element. As the element gets hotter, the electrical resistance increases. At a certain temperature, the res resistance becomes too much and it prevents the heater from overheating. It takes energy to heat water, but the aquarium is also losing heat energy to the environment. 
The goal of these nano heaters is to provide more energy to the aquarium than it's losing. And I've set up three small nano tanks with heaters in order to show you guys how this works. Now it's three different sizes, three different heaters. Right now they're running without the heaters on so that we can get a baseline of the temperature within the aquarium. We'll plug in the heaters, wait until tonight and get another measurement. One of the things that Aquion really wanted to make sure people understood is that these little flat heaters or these little nano heaters um, do have a certain threshold for temperature increase that they can achieve based on their wattage and the aquarium size. And I will put their actual temperature increase chart up on the screen here. So you can get a predictable result, but that's also why it's so important to make sure that you choose the correct size heater for a profoundly small aquarium. As you guys probably know, like with a little aquarium, uh, changes can happen quickly and they tend to be more dramatic than in an aquarium with more volume. So here we have a five gallon, a two and a half gallon, and a one gallon. And I've set them up the way the manufacturer recommends with the heater, the light, and the filter. And they've been running for about a day now. Now the heaters are not plugged in yet, so I'm gonna take my ambient temperature chart and figure out what that reading is. Now I prefer to use these glass thermometers to do so, but whatever you prefer is totally fine. So I keep my fish room heat heated down here to about 82 degrees, which means most of my aquariums don't really require supplemental heating except for those that house my high pancistrous plecos. The top row of my aquariums year round stays about 80 degrees, middle row about 78, and bottom row about 77. And that's with running space heaters at each end of my fish room. If you are keeping a single aquarium in some place like your living room or your bedroom, you're going to find that you probably do need to utilize some sort of heater. This little aquarium in my fish room is hanging out at 80 degrees. That's without the heater plugged in and why I personally would not need to use a heater to maintain tropical temperatures. So the one gallon, no heater is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that heater in. Now for the smallest aquarium, I utilize this little five watt mini heater that says it's good for desktop aquariums up to two and a half gallons. According to their chart, a two and a half gallon with a five watt heater will raise the temperature within the aquarium by five degrees. So it's important to know that because if your ambient temperature in your home is in the mid 70s, say you keep your house at 72 degrees, this can raise the aquarium temperature by five degrees. If you keep your house profoundly colder, say 68, you may need to size up a heater in order to maintain the proper temperature. But keep in mind, as the seasons change, you change, you would need to adjust this. See, this two and a half gallon is at 80 degrees as well. Well, it's not surprising as that's how most of my aquariums run. Let's check the five gallon. And I'll plug in the heater on this dude. Now on this five gallon aquarium, the temperature is only 77. Again, you can see the impact of volume and the energy needed to, to make the water warm and the temperature that you can maintain. All three of these aquariums are in the exact same spot, same light, same filtration, no heater. And this one is cooler because it's slightly larger. Let's go ahead and plug that heater in too. Now for the two and a half gallon, I use the seven and a half watt aquatic flat heater, which says it's good for up to three gallons. And for the five gallon, I utilize the 15 watt heater, ideal for up to 10 gallons. So you can see for each one of these, um, this one ended up being five times because it was the smallest I had. This one was, you know, not even two times. 
and this one is three times the wattage to tank volume. And we'll see what happens here. Now, again, Aquion does provide a pretty nice chart that I showed you guys earlier. According to this, the 15 watt heater in a five gallon tank should raise the temperature by six degrees. And the seven and a half watt in a two and a half gallon should raise the temperature by seven degrees. So, you know, again, I would encourage you guys when you're choosing your heaters to make sure you have an idea of ambient temperature, a way to monitor your temperature, and choose your heater according to manufacturer instructions. Now, I also wanted to show you the external thermostat. Now, I purchased this for the sake of this video, but I'm actually going to be using it as well. So, how this works is it comes with a temperature probe is this jobby that you would put inside your aquarium. You plug this into the wall and you can set your temperatures. Now this one is for two different tanks um, and then you plug your heaters into this and then that way you can set the temperature for your heaters which removes the fluctuation that can occur through a seasonal shift and it also protects you from having your heaters stick on or turn off. It also will then light up to show you if it's actually on or not. And with a lot of these little heaters and even some of the, uh, the adjustable ones, there's no signifying light that lets you know if it's on or not. You have to physically check. So these are a really great idea. And again, I believe there's quite a few DIYs that are out there. So whether you decide to heat your room or use aquarium heaters, it's really important that you have a way to monitor the temperature. You've, I'm sure you've all heard horror stories online about heaters failing, either not heating the water or overheating the water. And the responsibility falls on us as the caretakers of our aquariums to make sure we're doing all that we can to do this safely. You can use stick-on thermometers, you can use a laser temperature gun, which to be clear, really only measures the surface of the water. Uh, not into the water, or you can use a more typical floating glass or plastic thermometer or even a digital probe, whatever you want. So another reason it can be important to have heaters on hand and know how to use them properly is that for some diseases, most specifically ick, manipulating the temperature can be a really valuable way to influence the life cycle of a parasite and expedite treatment. So it's important to know the heating range that you can provide within your aquarium should you need to do treatment. So I waited until the next day and I just measured the temperature in this one which is 86 degrees. So obviously what this means is if you were to be setting up this aquarium you would want to use a smaller heater if your ambient temp is like it is down here. Um, again this is why it's so important to size your heater for the size of the aquarium, um, especially with these small heaters, you don't want to just assume it'll go to an appropriate temp. 86 is pretty darn warm. This little guy, oof, that's hot, is already at 88, which is what their chart said it would get to which again, way too warm for a tropical species. So again, if I was to be setting this up down here, I would certainly not use a heater in this one gallon. Now let's see where the five gallon's at. Uh, it should get up to about 84. We have to let that float around for a minute and then we'll check in. And it is at 84 degrees. So what does this mean for you guys? Let's talk about that. So what does this mean for those of you that need to use heaters in your aquariums? Well, it means you need to arm yourself with information before you choose your heater. Set up your aquarium, measure the temperature range that you're getting within a day, look at manufacturer recommendations, especially for these small tanks, and choose a heater that's going to increase the water temperature to the range that you want. It's really important that you place your heater in a way that the filter can circulate the water so you can get accurate readings and make sure you're keeping an eye on the temperature in the aquarium. And if you wanna be really safe, pick up something like this external thermostatic regulator for your heaters. As always, I wanna know what you guys think. Um, I am glad that Aquion wanted us to have this discussion so people could 
choose appropriate size heaters for their nano aquariums. I mean, the last thing any manufacturer wants to read or see or hear about is that fish are being cooked or that their product is not being used properly and it's resulting in problems within our aquariums. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Make sure you subscribe to that notification bell on and stay tuned for more videos.